Dave, Robert Tilton, and his amazing money machine. But first, Larry Lee, a preacher who told you he lost his home and all his possessions in a devastating fire. I don't think he, ha he has mansion here because he's going to have his mansion in heaven. We'll take a look at heaven on earth, Lee's other home, the lakeside estate that followers weren't told about when Fronton continues. When the seeds, the best time to sow is when you're hit. Lee sells himself as a preacher so powerful, he can even convert a witch. And a year ago, he got a lot of national publicity when he produced this man, Eric Pryor. He said that Pryor was a major leader of the San Francisco pagan community. But that after Lee had prayed with him and given him a Bible, Pryor renounced witchcraft and became a Christian. And because of the conversion, Lee says, Pryor even married his live-in girlfriend. He married Sandra, the girl he was uh, going with, when we met him. He's a pure Christian today. Yeah, he really is. In everything he does. Yeah, he, he's waiting for the Lord. So we started to do a little checking. We discovered right away Eric Pryor was never a major leader of the pagans. But Pryor does have a long arrest record, and he has said his conversion was accompanied by whining, dining, and money. We helped Eric by giving him a little bit of money. How much? Uh, I think about $1,000 a month. A lot of people would say you'd have a lot of conversions in this country. Yeah, but if you'd offer $1,000 a month, the reality, the reality is that Eric was a gentleman who, a fellow who, when he got saved, he had nowhere to go. But Pryor recently told the San Francisco Chronicle the cause of his conversion, he's earned $100,000 this year. And the money isn't the only problem with the story we tell about Pryor. We have searched all of the records in California. There are no marriage documents. There are no marriage certificates. Well, that's my understanding was that he got married. And maybe one of the reasons there are no marriage certificates is the fact that he has a wife from whom he is not divorced. Hmm. Pryor also has two children. He wasn't ordered to pay them child support because he had no money. But now that he makes thousands, his wife says, he still sends them nothing. This is the man who is living a good Christian life now? Well, this is all brand new to me. New to Lee? Well, Lee's colleague, the man who performed the ceremony, told us he knew all along Pryor wasn't divorced, and he didn't consider the service a real marriage. There's a pastor, right? And, and here is that pastor and prior with Lee two weeks after our interview. Lee's still parading prior as his prize accomplishment. I became born again. <laughs> hey, man! A big moment. Lee knows how to turn into big money. And with the aid of a courageous local pastor, Larry Lee is building the first spiritual church in Auschwitz since the end of World War II. Another big attention-getting campaign by Lee was this fundraiser last summer, an emotional appeal for the church Lee was building at the site of the Nazi horror. Well, in Auschwitz, we're going there to build a physical church as well as instruct the pastors. For six weeks, Lee's phone lines lit up taking donations for the cause. If you would like to make a donation using your Visa or MasterCard, press 1. What Lee didn't know was that we had followed him undercover when he went to Poland. It turns out the church at Auschwitz isn't Larry Lee's church at all. Yeah. No, no, Lee only spent about an hour at the church. Looked around, nothing else. The church treasury secretary told us it was started two years ago by the Polish Pentecostal community, with money raised entirely on their own. Until now, we did not leave a penny here. And the church that right now we're building in Auschwitz, Poland, you gave a clear impression on the air that you were going over to build this church. Mm -hmm. In fact, this church had been underway for two years mm -hmm. before you ever, your name even came up in it. That's right. Before he left Poland, Lee did give the church a one-time donation of $30,000. The head of the church told us Lee had said that was all we could give. So compared to the millions the Lee ministry takes in every year, a $30,000 gift is all change. Well, we also, Diane, and we talked about the fact that we were raising money for the Poland Crusade. We talked about the fact that we were bringing the pastors and their wives. And how much did that cost? 
I don't know for the, I don't know exactly. We do. Cost twelve thousand dollars. So that's a total of forty two thousand dollars. When you were taking in how much as part of this campaign? Yeah, I'm not sorry. I'm not sure exactly the numbers. Because we have copies. So we told Lee we obtained some of his bank records. It showed the amount he gave in Poland was much less than his ministry often yeah. takes in in a day. You can see on this document, Larry Lee's ministry took in more than a million dollars in one month. Day after day. You're taking in enormous amounts of money. You're taking in $111,000. That's one day. $17,000. $26,000, $45,000, one day. Do you think the people who sent in money to this church knew that you were going to give this church a tiny fraction of what you make in one day? You know, Diane, we are, uh, you mentioned the National Religious Broadcasters uh, earlier. We have uh, the Ethicon Seal, who is their Ethics and Financial Integrity Commission. Which so is, did Jim and Tammy Basic. No. Uh, the, the reality is that when we when we applied for this, we submitted um, we submitted all of how we raise finances, where the money goes, how it goes. We have an audit every year on everything that we do. Can we see it? Sure. But it's now been a month and a half since that interview, and the Lee Ministry has never given us the audit or figures on donations to Poland. Which leads the question, the Lee followers misled about the money they gave for a specific project. We have every reason to ask our to look into it. And I'll take the Again, Congressman Jake Nichol. What did they do with the other money? Where did it go and where is it? Some of it, of course, buys more airtime. Lee used airtime last summer to tell viewers about a calamity in his personal life, saying he'd lost everything he had because his Tulsa house has burned to the ground. We've had plenty to wear, praise okay. God. It ain't much, but what we've got, <laughs> it's on us. He even offered to send followers a tape, lessons from his misfortune. Now Larry Lee applied them to his own life after fire destroyed his family's home for a sacrificial investment of $30 or more. To the we lost our furniture, and we lost uh, our home, and we lost uh, most of our clothes. Everything you have? Yeah. Well, not quite everything. A Tulsa house burned all right, an insured house Lee had been trying to sell for two years without loss. Lee says he just moved his things into it before the fire. But Lee didn't lose this house, the 5.1-acre estate outside Dallas, where he's been living for the past six years. So viewers hear about his destitution. My little girl, she said, Daddy, you don't have to get me a car. Uh, because we probably don't have enough money. You knew what you said. No, ma'am. You knew the impression you were creating. You think people knew that you were not destitute, homeless, wiped out? We moved with all of our furniture and everything we had last June. So what was Lee saying? That there was nothing left in that house in Dallas? We were told that you have a lot still there. No, there's nothing there. Nothing? Take a look at these photographs taken two days after our interview with Lee. The Dallas house filled with furniture, books, family photos. Lee's maid and the nanny were still working there. And not only that, we learned one month after the Tulsa house burned, Larry Lee's ministry bought him another house there, a third house, paid for in cash. Let me tell you something. God's people will always have enough money if, when they're hit by the devil, they sow the biggest seeds they can. He may have faith in God. You ought to have faith in that the internal radio service doesn't find out about this. Then pursue him. Again, some notes. We have received a battery of letters from Lee's public relations spokesman saying we missed some of the money he spent in Poland. For instance, giving out his own books for free. But the spokesman said the reason he couldn't tell us how much Lee had collected for Poland was because all of the donations, no matter the project, go into one central fund. 